Hey guys, your second favorite PE teacher, Denver, and these are nine common mistakes that new players make in Fortnite Battle Royale. Before we begin, leave a comment below and tell me how many total wins and games played you have in Fortnite, as I'm curious to see who is rocking the best stats. All right, let's get started. Nice. After putting hundreds or thousands of hours into PR or shooting games like PUBG or Counter-Strike, making the transition to Fortnite, it could be tough. I, I, I asked probably way too many questions to my buddies and learned every lesson the hard way, even if it meant dying repeatedly, which of course will happen in any Battle Royale game. Over enough time, you'll eventually improve and get it all figured out, but here are the most common mistakes I see new players make, as well as some other tips to get you a win. The first mistake new players do is they don't build correctly or even build at all. If you're coming over from other battle royale games, you're used to just looting, finding some objects to take cover behind, and just fighting it out to the end. In Fortnite, you will want to build your own objects and build them quickly. The faster you get at queuing up and placing objects, such as walls and stairs, the more battles you will find yourself winning, possibly leading to an overall match win. It doesn't even have to be a massive base in the sky like you see others do on streams and other YouTube videos. Something as simple as a wall with stairs can protect you and cover you for long enough to get a few shots off. Shots coming from behind you or to the side of you as well? Just drop another wall down and heal up if you feel you have the time. At the very least, a quick wall or two can buy you some time to come up with an escape or attack plan. Keep in mind that objects in the process of being built will always be more susceptible to being destroyed as they take extra damage from incoming fire. Dropping wall after wall and burning through your resources in battle is still always a better option than dying. If I get caught under attack in an open field, you'll often see me backpedaling while jumping around placing wall after wall until I feel I am safe enough to heal, escape, or to put some stairs down and start returning fire. Get those walls, stairs, and even the roof on a hotkey unless you feel the default F keys are working for you. Many players will even use the buttons on their mouse so they can defend themselves in an instant. So improve those building skills as soon as possible and you will find yourself winning more single battles which will hopefully lead to winning more matches. The second mistake I see new players make is slow or poor looting. There will be battles decided on how fast you can loot at the beginning of the game. Here's what you need to know. First, you might have already figured out that the ascending order of quality of guns is white, then green, then blue, purple, and then orange, which is legendary, and eventually mythic maybe by the time you're watching this video, although it's not currently in the game. Not only will the greater qualities do more damage, the recoil and even bullet spread of shotguns and burst ARs are closer together, so your first goal when looting is to find those higher quality guns as soon as possible to try to win the early battles. This might mean gliding over a few rooftops on your way down into a city and doing some quick sightings through windows. Look for that colorful glow and don't be fooled by the light blue glow of a trap. When you find loot, there are two ways to pick it up. You can press E if it's a larger object or just run over it with your character if it's ammo or resources to be automatically picked up. That's basic, you probably already know it, but the tip here is that if you want to avoid picking up lesser or weaker weapons on the ground, switch to your pickaxe and spam E to loot and you won't accidentally exchange guns. Sure, this might only save a second or two here or there, but those seconds can add up when getting a jump on an enemy or running in from the storm. A quick side tip, if you see a gun on the ground with no ammo, a player has been there and has taken the ammo, so keep an eye out. The gold chests are your best bet for early survival as they will always drop a gun, so aiming for these chests when possible is key. If you can't see the gold chests, you might hear them. In that case, start knocking down some walls and making your way to the chest. Just be sure not to destroy the floor under the chest as it will take the chest with it. Chess will also drop ammo, which is precious in Fortnite, and possibly some medical gear. If you can land in a spot with two or three gold chests, you might find yourself looted for endgame even five minutes into the match. Don't expect only big cities to have gold chests either. There are gold chests scattered around the entire map, sometimes just sitting in the middle of wooded areas or on top of hills. It is not like PUBG in the sense that if you don't drop in a big city, you won't get the best loot. Which leads us to the next mistake that new players make, only landing in major cities. Just because it has a name on it on the map doesn't make it any better than around the rest of the map. The map looks big but is actually easy to traverse and doesn't mean that you will be stranded if you're outside of a major location. In fact, the minor locations and sometimes just being plain out in the middle of nowhere can offer you just as much loot and you often won't even need to battle it out for it. 
When I drop to random houses and hilltops outside of towns, I find that half or more of the entire match population is dead and gone by the time I even need to move for the second circle. There are even single or double houses with multiple gold chests around that you rarely have to contest. You might find you're eluded just from a house or two and can spend some time collecting resources by bashing the building into pieces, preparing for that end game. As always, keep an eye on enemies dropping nearby and use those improved looting skills to clear a chest or two quickly and wait for them to make a mistake, like getting caught in an open field or you can use crouch, sneak to the edge of the building, let them finish clearing their entire house and then you can just finish them off, securing all the loot for yourself. As a perfect segue into our fourth mistake that new and even advanced players make is underestimating the importance of sound in Fortnite. Even back in Counter-Strike and PUBG, we can all agree sound is important. But never has a game used sound so loudly and clearly like what I hear in Fortnite. Throw on a pair of headphones for added benefit, of course. If somebody is near you, you know it and you know exactly where they're coming from and if you're paying close enough attention. Footsteps are crucial to winning battles from the very beginning to the very end of the match. What separates Fortnite sounds from other games, though, is the destructible environment. When you break something down, it is loud, and it can be heard from quite a ways away. Many new players forget this as they are breaking through walls and chopping down trees or busting up cars. Not only can they be heard easily, but they can't hear enemies' footsteps. Be smart when destroying objects for resources and consider if the noise made from it is worth it. As for gunshots, there are currently no silenced weapons in Fortnite. This means that every bullet shot is a clue for you or an enemy where somebody is. You might have a clear shot on someone and get the kill pretty easily. Just remember that any enemy around now knows exactly where you are. There are many times I have let enemies go for two important reasons. One, I don't have a clear shot and I won't be able to kill them for sure from my angle or distance. And number two, that it just isn't worth making the noise. And as an even more perfect segue into mistake number five, new players overvalue being on the offensive. It's your game, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but my suggestion is that you only engage in battles that you know you can win. Back when I played League of Legends, I would watch the best players in the world, the Koreans of course, and admire how aggressive they would be. As I improved and grew as a player myself, I realized that there wasn't really aggression. What I was calling aggression was just them simply knowing when they can win in a fight. They would only engage in battles that they had the upper hand on based on positioning or teamwork or just overall general skill. So if I'm out in the middle of a field with, say, a bolt-action sniper rifle, which is arguably the best gun in the game, and I see an enemy, I have two options, engage or don't engage. So what goes through my head is, am I good enough to drop the enemy from my location? What if I hit him once? Will he just, like, build a wall and heal and now have a clear shot at my location after building up in seconds? Does he have a teammate with a better angle on me than I have on this enemy? What if he does have a teammate and I am able to knock enemy one out in a single shot? Do I even have the means to quickly get to him and kill him and or his friend before he can be revived and heal up to full health? With the ultimate goal of the game being to survive, is that shot the best choice for me to make? Giving up my position, using ammo, taking return fire, and possibly using my medical gear all because I had a small chance that I might be able to hit someone. There will be many times you see somebody far ahead of you making their way to the circle with no idea you are there. You can take some pot shots at them and pray you hit them, or just bide your time and get in perfect position to win the battle. Now, like I said, this is all my suggestion and opinion, and especially just more so my play style. But you have to ask yourself what your goals are for the game. Is it to have fun and get as many kills as possible? Well, then go for it. In fact, that's the best way to learn and grow as a player. If your goal is to win the match, though, then a more methodical, calculated approach might be more of what you need. The next mistake new players make is leaving an obvious trail behind, inviting enemies to possibly follow them and probably eventually kill them. This might be stairs, uh, guns or ammo dropped in random spots, destroyed walls or rooftops or flat panels built across hilly terrain. Unlike PUBG, you can't look behind yourself easily in this game, and it's your weakest angle to be shot from considering many players run in a straight line. When I'm in the middle of nowhere and I see some stairs built, I can assume the exact direction the team headed, which is from whatever was built, broken, or left behind to the closest edge of the circle. 90% of the time, this is successful for me and gives me great positioning on a kill or two. So be aware of the trail you are leaving behind. You won't always have time to break objects you build, but at least consider closing doors and dropping unwanted items in a hidden location. At the very least, take a peek behind you as it's worth the extra second or two. A quick tip for changing directions quickly is to jump and turn any direction, then land facing the original direction. This will keep your forward momentum going and allow you to keep an eye on enemies. 
Another mistake new players make is they completely underrate explosives. Like we said, what sets Fortnite apart from other Battle Royale games is the fact that people can build objects and take cover anyway. With explosives, well, it takes care of that problem. A lot of people, they'll build with wood, especially early on, and then we'll see a lot more uh, clay, you know, brick, metal later on in the game. But what explosives do is they get people panicking, and when people are panicking, they often make really bad decisions, allowing you to have some open, some clear shots, or just to be able to sneak up on them and get a better angle on your enemy. Whether you have a blue, a purple, or a legendary grenade launcher or rocket launcher, doesn't matter. Just get some kind of explosives. Even the hand grenades make a huge difference, especially at the end of the game when people get really holed up. Something that a lot of people like to do is they build their buildings with four stairs or two stairs, and all the stairs just kind of it, it basically at the top of their fort, it creates a little bowl. And I don't know why people do this, but I keep seeing people create little bowls at the top of their fort. You toss a grenade right up in there, it's not leaving. It's going to sit right in that bottom of that bowl, explode that person's house. Like I said, get them panicking. And when people are panicky, they make terrible decisions. So this just gives you a huge advantage. So make sure that you are finding the explosives. And if you can't find the rocket launcher or grenade launcher, make sure you keep some handheld grenades on you at all times. The second to last mistake that I see new players make a lot is being way too afraid of the storm. It's okay to be in the storm for a little while, and if you have the healing, you can be in there for a long time. So don't be afraid to be in that storm and don't think, here it comes, everybody just run, and you end up making a really bad mistake. You run into an enemy team, and you die, and you pay for that mistake. When just five or ten seconds in that storm, you could have got maybe around a mountain or, or just a better angle to be more safe when you come out of that storm. And this is all, of course, dependent on whether you have the healing available or not, but a lot of times people will take maybe one, maybe zero looks in the storm behind them and that allows you to sneak up behind them. Same thing for you. Make sure you're looking out in the storm behind you because I think more people are catching on to this strategy. Make sure you are not afraid of the storm, new players. It doesn't hurt you that bad. Even late in the game, obviously, it does hurt a little bit more. And keep in mind that when that storm is moving in, it might do one or two damage per tick on you. But once that finishes closing and actually locks in on its next circle it'll do a lot more damage so watch it and try to catch up to the storm don't be too far away because it's going to start doing additional damage very soon as for the last tip of the video okay. and one of the biggest mistakes that i see a lot of new players make is not being able to jump from the bus correctly now of course you can jump anytime and it may only have like a one or two second maybe even a, sometimes even a 10 second difference make sure that you are jumping at an appropriate time it's not always whoever jumps from the bus first will get to the ground first because sometimes even jumping right over a location and just diving straight down is the best idea now here is what i do i get to where i'm about one white one of those white squares on the map away maybe a little bit closer depending on the height of the terrain that you plan on landing on and jump from the bus and go straight down and something that is really effective is just going straight down getting down to the ground as quick as you can and then hitting your glider and that, that glider will take you a very long way into whatever town whatever house whatever you're looking for so play around with it a little bit and you'll be able to figure this one out over time but just keep that strategy in mind to drop down straight and hit that glider to coast in. And normally what you find is you beat everybody down. You'll get good at this. You'll get loot sooner and you'll be able to get a lot more kills or at least be able to have a chance defending yourself before others can get to you. Whew, that is it. That is nine common mistakes that you players make in Fortnite. If you find yourself making some or all of these mistakes repeatedly, don't worry about it as just like anything else. It takes time, it takes some practice to get good at anything you do. If you're still here and you enjoyed the video to the end, click like, subscribe, and check out a few more of my videos to see if this channel is the right place for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.